so the coming to the uh, climate change the uh, apart from the natural uh, climatic variability uh, which takes place uh, the um, global uh, climate change uh, uh, is uh, also because of two major uh, anthropogenic uh, impacts that we have uh, and that is the particularly uh, which has started from the uh, industrial revolution of uh, 1750 onwards uh that uh, we are uh, because of the industrial revolution and all uh, the various components of the uh, atmosphere uh and the and its uh, effect on uh, the surface albedo or uh, evapotranspiration rates uh, etc um, have changed because of these uh, anthropogenic interventions and the two major anthropogenic uh, impacts or interventions are uh, one in the form of uh, say greenhouse gases uh, which uh, is due to the increase in the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the other is because of the uh, various uh, industrial activity uh, the amount of aerosols the atmospheric aerosols uh, which uh, are Uh, change in the atmosphere and they are also having an impact on on the uh, climate now <coughs> again uh, coming to the uh, uh, climatic uh, response and the carbon dioxide uh, which is being generated in the atmosphere we can see that uh, the previous records have already shown that over the last uh, say uh, around 650000 years the carbon dioxide although kept on fluctuating uh, during uh, different uh, uh, periods but they were still below 300 uh, parts per billion uh, sorry parts per uh, million and uh, after the industrial revolution uh, say 1750 it has started increasing and now uh, it has uh, increased to uh, uh, much greater levels compared to uh, what was the average level of carbon dioxide over the uh, ages so uh, because of this the uh, amount of carbon dioxide which increases in the atmosphere that leads to uh, increase in the temperature also and it has been found that because of the human activities after say around 1850 or so the carbon dioxide level is uh, now about 30% higher uh, than what it existed uh, from the uh, pre industrial level so uh, this uh, will definitely cause an increase in the temperature of the earth's atmosphere and our surface and uh, the models have shown uh, that uh, particularly the ipcc report which uh, mentions and uh, the various uh, studies on uh, climate change they have shown that it is likely that the temperature of the earth will increase in the range of 2 to 4.5 degrees when the carbon dioxide level is around doubled so the temperature uh, is because only because of this carbon dioxide may increase uh, to something like 2 to 4.5 degrees centigrade now Uh, this uh, um, uh, change in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases actually uh, what they cause they lead to the various fluctuations in the atmosphere for example if you study the uh, temperature of the globe of the earth uh, on an average scale then we will find that the number of uh, uh, high temperature uh, you know average high temperature years uh, are becoming high and high during the last 2 uh, 3 decades so say for example in the last uh, you know 12 15 years the warmest years uh, are almost uh, out of uh, 15 around 14 years have been uh, in which the temperature has of the average temperature of the earth has been found to to increase uh, on on a year to year basis so the frequency of such events such increasing uh, increase in temperature or say such fluctuation in the uh, rainfall or uh, these things uh, are an indicator that there is a global uh, warming which is taking place and because of that there is a uh, change in uh, climate which is reflected in various forms 
Now, they, apart from carbon dioxide, there are uh, methane and nitrous oxide, which are uh, also potential uh, greenhouse gases. And their concentration also is found to have increased over the, uh, uh, from the uh, pre-industrial period to industrial period of, or to the current uh, period, uh, which uh, one can see that uh, there is an increase in carbon dioxide of about more than 30%. Similarly, methane has gone up by more than 150% uh, percent and nitrous oxide uh, also by 15 to 20%. So, uh, this uh, increase now, uh, the current status of the climate change uh, can be seen from uh, this uh, graph, uh, which is actually uh, has been now been provided by the IPCC latest report. And it says that the observed global average uh, temperature is um, uh, on, on an annual basis, uh, it has been increases by uh, more than 0.2 degrees uh, over the uh, period so of uh, 1850 to 2012. Similarly, the <coughs> impact on sea ice uh, extent, which is actually going down over the Arctic region uh, because of the rise in temperature. Then uh, the also the because of the uh, melting of the uh, sea ice the sea level is uh, seen to have risen uh, during the 1900 to say 2010 uh, uh, period and uh, relative to the uh, what is what it is around uh, 1900 or so so with respect to that even there is a change in global uh, sea level uh, and the temperatures so the surface temperature uh, over a period uh, of last uh, 10 years I can say they are also increasing and the annual uh, average uh, precipitation is uh, becoming erratic. That is uh, the, the precipitation, uh, it can go uh, very high in a short span of time and at some places it can be drought, which is again the indicator uh, of uh, the glo global uh, change, which is now, the total uh, annual uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gas emission, uh, which uh, is uh, now in the current scenario, uh, starting from 1970 to current date, it is actually increasing by, say, 2.2% per year, and uh, which is uh, actually alarming. Now, even a decade earlier, this percentage was only 1.3% per year. But the rate of acceleration uh, of these greenhouse gases, uh, uh, particularly the nitrous oxide, methane, fluorine, and all other gases, actually, it is uh, very alarming. And uh, this is uh, definitely causing the greenhouse, uh, the increase, this increase in greenhouse gases is uh, causing the uh, global warming uh, and uh, the climate change. So, now, uh, we all are aware of uh, the effects of uh, these global climatic changes. Now, they, these changes are they can be reflected in the form of uh, change in precipitation pattern. So, the area, some areas will have uh, more precipitation, some will uh, have droughts, then uh, the cloudbirds events will be increasing. So, these are all uh, the effect of uh, climate change then various uh, it will have various effects on uh, on organisms uh, like zooplankton um, and even other uh, various uh, organisms migrating birds uh, and so they will have uh, impacted by these uh, global climate change and their uh, the coral reefs and uh, even their uh, bleaching in events are uh, increasing because of uh, this uh, climate change events. Also, it has a severe effect on uh, human health, which uh, is uh, now uh, indicated by several uh, parameters, even uh, whether it is a heat related death or because of the aerosols. So, so uh, they are causing a human health problem because of global warming. Uh, then they have a severe effect on uh, agriculture uh, because of the change in irrigation pattern and uh, 
it also changes the solar insulation and the productivity of uh, agricultural uh, products and also the behavior of pets and other things are affected which in turn affect the um, agriculture so these are the various changes uh, of uh, climate globally uh, which are now visible and uh, they can be uh, measured and now the uh, effect on human health there are uh, several because of this uh, climate change and they have been studied for example the effect of malaria dengue <coughs> yellow fever and others so more and more areas where these uh, events were earlier not uh, recorded those areas are becoming vulnerable to uh, this uh, kind of uh, diseases and uh, they also affect the human health so you know the climate change uh, is having effects on several um, aspects of uh, human health and even behavior and uh, but then the um, the the challenge is that uh, whether can whether we can uh, measure it accurately or it is all uh, the theoretically that we have to study so the measurements also there are several uh, critical parameters which need to be measured uh, for uh, studying the climate change and those parameters are temperature then wind speed relative humidity rainfall atmospheric pressure and sunshine hour so these are the critical parameters uh, which uh, one need to measure to ascertain uh, the or study any change in climate then the primary parameters uh, are still being the temperature near the ground surface and the amount of precipitation so with the help of these parameters uh, we can study the uh, climate change um, through observation but <clears throat> there are climate models Uh, uh to study uh, these uh, changes and uh, in uh, climate models uh, basically uh, what we do we divide the entire uh, earth uh, and its atmosphere into different grids and uh, these thousands of uh, three dimensional uh, grid cells uh, they uh, are in, uh, they are divided into each one is represented uh, through climate model or by general circulation model in terms of uh, the identified quantities uh, that represent the uh, process in that cell and then uh, through mathematical equations uh, these uh, the quantities particularly the amount of uh, radiation uh, which is going out from one cell to another and the uh, uh, mass Uh, of uh, air which is going from one cell to another is monitored through the uh, mathematical equations and uh, they are uh, then uh, subsequently used to find the uh, the change in climate forcing from one grid to another grid and uh, based upon that uh, the by using the fundamental uh, laws of physics um, in every grid Uh, and fluid motion and atmospheric chemistry so horizontally and vertically uh, these parameters are studied and then shifted from one grid to another uh, to study in a completely three dimensional way through the uh, through the models and uh, again uh, it will uh, depend upon the uh, the sensitivity of the model or the reliability of the model Uh, so these things will uh, depend upon the grid sizes the more the uh, number of grid or finer the resolution of the uh, grid uh, it will have uh, more detailed uh, uh, study uh, about the changes but then it will require more uh, computational power similarly in terms of uh, time scale these uh, also if we want to study these changes uh, through global uh, circulation model general circulation model uh, the changes on a smaller uh, time scale will require um, more grid uh, in the time scale and so there will be much more uh, increased calculations and more computational power so um, similarly uh, if uh, the so these are the two things the number of grids in terms of uh, space and time 
which will uh, determine uh, basically uh, the uh, the quality of the model uh, to study uh, the climate uh, and its effect so these climatic effect <coughs> which are calculated in terms of models are then tested uh, by on the surface through measurements and what is called the wind casting so here the model runs are compared with the past data and the the models from the past data they are run to forecast the future projections and then it is compared with the current observations and then the reliability of the model is tested on that basis so so uh, there are um, problems not only with the model but uh, also uh, with the uh, measurements various measurements uh, that have to be done to procure the data and uh, the various kinds of errors uh, which must be taken into account uh, in any measurement uh, so that uh, they can uh, verify the model later on but first the measurements has to be has to quantify the instrumental or human errors then uh, the changes in uh, instrument or uh, observation technique so all these things uh, lead to um, error in measurements which uh, will also uh, which must also be taken into account then uh, the surrounding stations then uh, the different uh, stations that uh, are responsible for taking these uh, regular measurements so they have to be um, they have to be as per the measurement standards and uh, uh, the solutions that uh, uh, need to um, have for different uh, measurements they should be uh, should be actually compatible or comparable uh, with uh, different stations so these uh, things are taken care of uh, when we do the, uh, the data uh, simulation or data simulation over uh, different uh, observations so all these uh, the, the data in the global picture uh, so they have to be um, taken carefully and then check for the possible artifacts which are uh, which may be possible in the measurements and then uh, these corrected uh, data uh, should uh, data are actually taken as uh, the measurements which can uh later on uh, they serve as an uh, input uh, to the um, global circulation model and also for comparing the uh, model uh, results uh, with the observation so um, thank you very much uh, for uh, this part the um, second part uh, which uh, we will discuss will be the atmospheric aerosol and its implication to climate forcing